One man's dream. The man's name was Robert E. Maytag. He died six months before the zoo opened. He would be proud to know that the zoo protects animals from being endangered by Hayden. Mr. Maytag worked with the whole community of a Phoenix Zoo to make the zoo come true. Today, the zoo joins in many efforts to save the endangered animals like the Mexican wolf and the Asian elephant. The zoo has made a difference in many animals' lives by faith. Phoenix Zoo's mission statement. The Phoenix Zoo provides experiences that inspire people and motivate them to care for the natural world. The Phoenix Zoo gets people very excited. Everybody loves the zoo. By Autumn. After two years in existence, the Phoenix Zoo was the only zoo to save the Arabian oryx. Since the zoo has been a conservationist zoo, the Arabian oryx is a type of antelope by Sarah. The oryx became endangered after hundreds of years of hunting and ruining their habitat in the Arabian Peninsula. In 1964, Phoenix brought nine orcs to the zoo. This was the beginning of the zoo's conservationist efforts by Kelsey. In order to manage this, the zoo has to work with other zoos. They make phone calls and, and emails all the time to stay connected by Brendan. One day, a worker might call a zoo inside or even outside of the country to start planning what animals could come to the zoo or be sent out. They want to make sure that there is all room for new babies by Martin. When a call is made to another country, this becomes an international effort. One of the animals that the Phoenix Zoo has helped to save is the African elephant. This elephant is endangered because people are cutting down the trees by Roger. When a new animal comes, everybody pitches in. They hire specialty contractors for the right job, such as concrete, water systems, rocks, and buildings. When everybody helps, the job gets done quickly by Keegan. One of the special jobs is the architects. They design the animal's habitat and draw out the plans by Ashley. You may notice that the orangutan habitat is brand new. It gives the orangutan family more room to play and move around. The dad's name is Michael and he is 24 years old. The baby's name is Kasha. She is five and her mom, Bess, is 32. Grandma Duchess is 50 years old by Gracie. When new animals come to, to the zoo, workers gather information in a book online or they can call other zoos. They can find out many things before, they, before the new animals arrive by Emily. When the zoo hires new people, the old staff teaches the new staff what to do. Things like where the water is and where they keep the food. Those are a few of the things they need to know by Natalie. To make sure the animal's home looks and feels like their old home, zoo workers research the country and talk to other zoos to find things out. We want the animals to be happy by Cadence. Some of the animals that the Phoenix Zoo helps conserve are the red panda, gazelle, Mexican wolf, and the African hunting dog. The zoo also takes care of the black-footed ferret by Robert. The Phoenix Zoo has worked with the black-footed ferret that almost became extinct in the 1980s. They are the second most endangered animal in North America. They are there are only six places in the world that breed the black-footed ferret, and the Phoenix Zoo is one of them. Bye, Noel. The ferret eats the prairie dogs. The farmers wanted them gone because they dug holes in the planting ground. The farmers poisoned the prairie dogs, and then the 
ferrets died. The Phoenix Zoo helps the ferrets to not become extinct. By Elena. In 2008, the camp put in and Ethel merely found a tissue. Tyson donated a million to, to build Komodo Island. Komodo Island looks like a fishing village with lots of shady and sunny spots for the largest living lizard in the world. The exhibit opened in 2009 by Caleb Day. The new exhibit is called Land of the Dragon. The two dragons are brother and sister, and their names are Ivan and Gia. They are 15 years old, and their habitat is Indonesia is being destroyed by kale. One of the new exhibits is the koala bears, and they are now part of the zoo's conservation efforts with the San Diego Zoo. Their names are Kobe and Suki. They went back to California by Jacob. Before Kobe and Zuki came to our zoo, all of the workers built a koala habitat that was just right. It had to be tested before they moved in to make sure they would be safe and happy by Madison. The Phoenix Zoo takes very good care of animals. They have two veterinarians, they're full time. They have a special room with all the treatments and equipment by Caleb F. Animals sometimes live longer in zoos than in the wild because at zoos, they give them their food and water instead of them having to fight for it. The predators are not there either. The animals have a, a lot less stress and when they need to, they can go to the doctor by page. Not only do animals do well in zoos, they are there for us to enjoy. Did you know that there are over 1,200 animals in the zoo? Wow! The zoo is a great place to see animals from all over the world by Sawyer. When you visit the zoo, you need to follow the zoo rules. One rule is no balloons because the animals can choke on balloon pieces. Also, no loud stuff like radios or whistles because it will scare them. Always respect animals and their habitats. by Ethan. After a day at the zoo, you will be so inspired that you might say, I want to help the animals too. You can help by donating and you will be filled with hope for the animals world. In the Phoenix Zoo by Taylor. Creating and conserving a dream is a story that spans more than 50 years. It started with one man, was nurtured and coaxed along by many, and is told by 26 first graders whose dream is to make a difference in the world with the help of their teacher, whose dream is to give her students a voice. Throughout our year-long inquiry of hope, we learned that it is our responsibility to care for each other in the animal kingdom and to live in harmony with and in respect for the world that we share. When we learned about the Phoenix Zoo and its conservation efforts, we hope that somehow we could help teach others by sharing the story and at the same time we would be helping lots of endangered animals. We dedicate our book to the Bud and Elaine Johnson Native Species Conservation Center with the hope that it will aid them in their continued efforts with the endangered animals around the world and also to the CW and Modine Neely Education and Event Center to aid them in the work of education and hopefully inspiring others to live in harmony with and to preserve nature. We would like to thank Phoenix Zoo Conservation and Education team members Dan, Stuart, and Serena for their part in the interview and data collection process, as well as Zoo Accounting team member Sandra Anderson for sharing our book with the Zoo Personnel Dream Team. We hope you enjoyed this video memory of our book and that you are inspired to help conserve the conservation dream.